Zach. Hi, this is Zach Glazer with Frog God Games. I'm here with Edwin Nagy, and we're going to discuss uh, rapid ethic levels and Roll20 for the upcoming Maps Kickstarter. He has more insight than almost anybody because uh, he's doing the rapid ethic 5e conversion work, and uh, he likes to play Roll20 all the time, so go ahead, Edwin. All right, so hello all, I am Edwin, and for some reason, uh, my party here has decided to flee up the stairs. Can you give and, a background to who that party is? Uh, well, it's a bunch of players from Frog God that are running themselves, that I'm running through Rap and Athic. And they're doing a really good job of pretending they don't know what's going on. And since <laughs> I don't know what's going on, it's been working out pretty well. <laughs> and as they head up the stairs, I can see from my GM screen notes that they are headed to level 1C. So I have basically um, gotten them arguing amongst themselves as players, and we will see if I can use that time to get ourselves a new uh, map going and get it into roll 20 in time to, uh, for them to be at the top of the stairs. So why you said so this is the okay. I just wanted to say real quick, and the reason we bring this up, of course, is that um, we are doing a Kickstarter for the maps for Rap and Athic, and um, these are the maps with the tools and layers that are being provided, almost like they will be, not exact. And so it's a demonstration of that. So Edwin, are you using Photoshop? What's, what's your what are you using first, tools wise? So this is Photoshop, so I have opened up the PSD file in Photoshop, and I will admit that although I am super, super familiar with Illustrator, I have very little knowledge with Photoshop. So really all I'm going to do is the a few minutes of turning layers on and off. Um, this is the wrong one. I want to open up the real file, which is actually what you guys will get so that you get to see everything. And you can see that you asked me a couple questions and I'm gonna keep my layers because the keep layers are what matters. I'm gonna to talk to Zach about these text layers and fonts that are missing. But fortunately, since the party is ready to hit the level, I don't need to spend too much time on that. So now you can see um, that I have really one window open here that I care about, which is the window of all of the layers and this is how the maps will come. Uh, it'll change some, but you can see I can turn things off and turn them on. So the first thing I want to do, because I normally forget this, is set the grid from the old school 10 foot square to the new school 5 foot square. So all I did was double click on this little guy here, it's change the scale. It's a pattern huh? adjustment. It's a pattern adjustment on the layer. It's a it's a pattern adjustment. I'm just going to kick in with what they are. So what happens is that goes on a layer. It's a grid layer with a pattern built into it. And what he's doing is resizing it down to be five foot square. So what did it start yep, out so as? You can see 86? it at 86%. It is 10 foot squares. And then as soon as I type the 43, all the squares get small. And I hit OK, and that makes me happy. Can you zoom in on that map to show them? Um, I probably can, yep. There we go. Perfect. So that's the, the five foot squares. You can see that over here on the right, uh, can you see my mouse on the video? Yes. Uh, there is a door and that's about five foot, so that's about right. So that has worked pretty well. And then basically what I'm doing is I wanna start by making the player map and the player map uh, pretty much looks like this. Um, so in other words, I've got a whole mess of layers here that I don't need for the player map. Uh, what I do want to look at, though, is um, I guess we've got that all turned off already. So the secret doors are gone. This is all, all what we want here. So I'm really just looking over this and seeing if there's anything I don't want my players to see. And I don't think I see anything. One thing that uh, you can see, if I zoom in again, that... This room right here, uh, to the left here is a secret door. Here's another couple of secret doors. And what's nice about that is once I get into roll 20 with um, the vision layers, when they're in this room, this is going to look just like any other wall. So they're not going to see a door there, which is pretty sweet. 
Although, of course, they made the map, so they actually know the doors are there. But we won't tell we them. We would never cheat like that, Edwin. But, but you well, guys would we, never we, cheat we, like we, that. We'll lose before we get to that point. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, so real quick before we start doing the Roll20, can you go down the list of layers on the side there? So everybody just yep. read? Yep. So the layer labels layer... Um, the tags layer, that's all of the room numbers and so forth. And I am going to leave those off for the player map, but then I'm going to come back and I'm going to make my GM layer and then I will turn them on. Uh, so that's one. Um, and you can see even within tags that we've got the lettered room. So right in the middle there, ABC and over on the right, I can turn those on and off separately. The numbers on and off separately. You can see that the secret doors have all appeared. I can turn those on and off separately. But in this case, I'm just turning off all of the layers that gets rid of the traps, the pits, the doors, uh, not the doors, the secret doors. Uh, I am going to turn off deco, and I'm just doing that to basically make a, a simpler image. Um, I don't need the north arrow, for example, and I don't need to see what layer I'm in. Uh, but I think, you know what, maybe I do... Uh, want to see some of it so I can say well compass I don't need and the uh, Circles I don't need but maybe I want to leave the border for whatever reason um, I do want in labels. I do want to turn on the if I can find it the actual title of the map um, Probably not letters do we know where that one is? Uh, are you sure it's not in the deco area? Probably is in deco. All right, let's go back to deco. We'll do that. Yes. I can tell you. Hold on. Okay. So we'll get in there. And, and that all... is actually the Mouth of Doom. It's in the uh, labels under Group 2. Group 2 has... There we go. Group 2, Mouth of Doom. There we go. Yep. So I'm going to turn on labels and I'm going to turn off letters, numbers, secrets. I'm going to turn off one square equals 10 feet because it's not true. And I'm going to leave on uh, the mouth of doom level 1C so I don't get lost in roll 20. I'm going to leave on to level 2B, 3C, and 2B so that I know where I'm going. But I'm going to turn off this arrow. And this arrow I have searched through and I actually did find that. And that is in group 3. Um, no, I, I want to oh, add. on. Where is my arrow? I found it. Letters, numbers, secrets, shape one. There it is. One thing I want uh, to add is, we're, as you're doing this, is that this would be a little more organized and a little more flattened um, when we have it sent out. The reason yes. they are like this right now is for us, in case there are corrections to the maps that we have to make, we're able to change every room number. It's more likely that if you're not going to use our room numbers, you want to use this for a standard dungeon map, you'll be able to turn off just all the um, labels and then secret doors are separate and then like arrows and pointers are also separate so there'll be like only three different layers of labels but we right. left them all on here right now and there's a possibility that i might leave them on as editable in groups so you can easily change the numbers that are located there for your own adventures but we'll see we're working on it okay go ahead sorry yeah no that's cool so i found the uh i found the arrow is shape one and notice i've gotten rid of that so I am ready here, and uh, I am going to save this as a JPEG, and I'm going to make it a player. So just doing the name of it so I can find it later, leave it in the same folder for now, saving it, and um, this is going to give me my options here. It says that it's going to be about 3.3 meg, and I can go up to... Uh, 5 or 10 meg on roll 20 depending on whether free or paid so I'm just gonna say yep let's you're, you're basically exporting it by saving it as you're changing it to a JPEG and getting rid of the extra layers correct uh, the, the JPEG will have no layers correct it's okay. going to be a, a compressed image file that you can open in any image viewing software and it makes it smaller so we can use it in roll 20 and such and that's and yep yeah. And so one of the reasons I got rid of uh, some of the detail work out here is that the busier a JPEG picture is, the less it compresses. So that just helps to cut down a little bit on on file size. In his day so. job, he's an engineer, so he knows things. <laughs> In my day job, I'm a uh, frog guy. I don't know as much. <laughs> 
<laughs> such a liar. Um, so I have um, gotten rid of, I have made the player map, and now I want to go in and make the GM map. And for the GM map, uh, this is going to go into Roll20 as just notes. And what I want to do for that is I want to turn on now my uh, letters, numbers, and secrets. I want to turn off, this is kind of crazy, but I'm actually going to turn off the map. So the only thing I'm going to have on this, uh, on this map is just these letters and words. And you can't really see them uh, because it's white on gray, but it's all there, I promise. And I'm again going to save as. And now I am going to make a PNG file, which is another image file. But it's an image file that allows you to keep the transparent background. So this is like writing on an old uh, overhead transparency or writing on a glass exactly. uh, window. That's an important step, but it, what it, it does allow you, and this is the, why the maps are the way they are, is so you can export these layers and do this right here in Rule 20. So with the PNG file, you are getting, in a JPEG, it shows a black or white background, Edwin. Uh, I think the default would be a white background if you left it transparent. So, so if you made it with a JPEG, it just would have, well, the, this because of white letters, nothing. <laughs> but Right, just it, be white on white, be useless. Yeah, but uh, it's, even if it was a, with the bone black, you could not see the layers below when you did it there. So PNG is very important. That's... Yep. And if I were, um, if I weren't in such a rush, if it weren't like the players were about to hit the upstairs and I could, wanted to spend more time, and I cared, I could change those letters, you know, I could change the color of the letters to red or whatever made me happy, but I'm just going to save it and go with the default here, ready to rock. And then I'm going to head on over back to roll 20, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to make myself a new page. Oh, talk about real, real just, quick, Edwin, before you go. What are yeah. you looking at there right now on the roll 20? This is the roll 20 interface. What so is this is Roll20, this is the GM's interface, and this tab right here allows me to look at all of the maps that I have created for, for these yahoos. So they've already been through the cloisters, the lower temple of Sathagua. You're fired. I, I'm fired again. <laughs> Sathaga. And, uh, and now I'm going to make this new map here. Um, so this brings me over to a blank screen, basically. So there's nothing on here. It's got a grid. I zoom out. There's nothing on there. Is the grid five foot set already on World 20? Um, so I'm going to go to the page settings and deal with the grid. First of all, I want to make it bigger because these are fairly big maps. So I say, give me 100 units by 100 units to start with. One unit is five feet. That's what I want. White background is fine. For now, I'm going to keep the grid enabled um, with a size of one unit. And for now, that's all I'm going to do is just make a bigger space to play in. So I'm going to hit OK. It's going to give me a little warning that say that maps with large dimensions may cause trouble. But you know what? They've been working. So I say, let's keep going. If you were having internet problems, uh, slow feed or something, you might want to uh, make a lower quality JPEG when you export the map, but uh, so far this has worked pretty well. And then I come in here and I'm going to grab my map, but first I need to make sure I'm on the right layer. So I'm going to make a map layer. So I'm in my maps layer and I created a player JPEG. And Zach is going to give you a little song here during the few seconds that it takes for the uh, little elevator hold music while the map uploads. And again, if this is too slow, uh, that would be another reason to make a smaller JPEG. But the awesome thing I just it's not too bad. When it uploads on your end, your voice disappears as it's uploading. <laughs> what, what disappears? Your voice becomes more... Uh... It, your computer is sending too much out, so your voice gets gravelly oh. on the Skype. Nice. <laughs> I think that's what happened yeah. to me on the stream the other day now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, I think that is what happened. I think that is what happened. Anyway, so yeah. So here we so go. I, so I just dumped this into the map, and you can see here that we've got some... Uh, first of all, it looks fine. That's a good start. Uh, but you can see there's a problem. You can sort of make out over on the right here, uh, hard to see, but some big squares. And these squares are what it thinks is is five feet. So when I use my ruler, it says five feet, 10 feet. It doesn't match. 
So I'm going to fix that. And what I'm going to do is just zoom in as far as I can. You can see the big squares that are the default grid, and then you can see the little squares which I are hardwired into the map. And we are going to align to grid is one way to do it. And I'm going to do it this way because this is what you'll have to do first. And basically what it's asking me to do is choose a 3x3 three three area and say go. And I do that. And it does it. And normally what I do at this point, and I'm going to move it and if I just let go it moves back because it's snapping to the grid in some weird way so I use the alt key to snap to grid uh, to turn off snap to grid temporarily and look at it and I say well it's pretty good um, but I think it could be better so I'm gonna zoom in again and do it a, third, a second time and that's generally what I've done is done it twice and that has been good enough so one two three one, two, three, I'm trying to center it on the on the lines there. And what I've seen work best for me is 70 by 70, so I'm just gonna type that in. Boom, and then this is the beauty part here. So first of all, I come back out, zoom out, drag the map and say, okay, it fits. And now I can zoom in again and just check it out a little bit. So I get my ruler and I say, yep, that's 10 feet, that's about right. You'll notice it's not aligned, but I'm actually going to turn off Roll 20's grid now because I don't actually care about that. And I'm going to turn on dynamic lighting, which I'm going to need in a little bit. And say, okay, so now I have only the grid that was originally there. And when I measure it, boom, 10 feet, two squares, five feet, one square, um, it's pretty good, good enough for, for our scientific combats. This is when I did an applause check, track, right, on a soundboard? That's right, that's right. Because <laughs> this is the part I had the most trouble with the first time I tried to set it up. And then I'm going to do another trick that I figured out here, which is I'm going to set, set dimensions, and I'm going to write down 5460 by 7 thousand and I'm going to hit cancel and now I'm going to go to the GM layer so now I'm on a different layer which they can't see and I'm going to find my GM map which you can see here is basically nothing right if you look at the preview there doesn't matter if you can't see it well because we'll see it for real here drop it in this is a much smaller map it's only 300 400k so it should load more quickly. Does my voice break up for this one too? Just a little bit, not near as bad because it's obviously a smaller file. <laughs> All right. So now I am going to select this map, right click, advanced, set dimensions, pixels, and 5460 by 7,000, not 70,000. Set. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And one thing I did is I left the words on both maps. So I can actually take my GM notes and put them over the words there, which is pretty cool. And if I did it right, which this is, is... why you're so smart. Is things like this makes his life worth it. <laughs> <laughs> He made so no you buildings, but you know, this is where the important part is. <laughs> so you can see this map, uh, these level, these two levels here both lined up. So we're, we're rock on. Uh, so what I'm seeing is the numbers, the traps, the secret doors. And what they're going to see is just what we saw earlier. And the next step I will do, uh, and I'm not going to do all of it because it, it, this is a slow step um, a little bit, is the dynamic lighting. Uh, if any of you have any of you listeners have any brilliant ideas to uh, to speed this up, I'd love to hear them. Um, including speeding them up in a way that we can share to everybody. Um, oh, absolutely. Because that's the kind of thing that I would like to be able to include, if possible. And if I have to do the work, drudge work, hey man, it's just me, not you. Why would you not want that? <laughs> so. That's right. So in the uh, dynamic lighting layer, I am going to make some polygons. 
and I'm going to start uh, some lines, and I'm going to start with black lines, and I'm basically just going to go from center, centering on the uh, walls, and I left click to do those, and then I right click to end it, and I go here, around the corner, and notice I'm leaving the doors uncovered for now. And I'm just going to go around this little area. And I make sure my lines cross so that no light leaks out. And I'm also going to leave holes for the secret doors. And we can come in here. And I just want to get a couple rooms filled in so that you can see how it all yeah. you, If anybody looks. knows how to export these nicely, you're really going to want me to do it. Because we have these maze levels that, oh my lord. I'll even film me doing it so you can all feel better about it. But if someone has a good way to export these, that'd be awesome. I know that you have to be a subscriber for this, right? You got to pay a like a GM's like. There's a certain level of subscriber that gets dynamic lighting. True. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. So the cheapest, the first paid tier gets you dynamic lighting, and you don't need to use dynamic lighting. You can use Fog of War, which is free, uh, and actually some people prefer it. Um, but. Uh, we're, we have chosen to use the dynamic lighting, and it's it's reasonably quick, um, but it does it, it does take a bit of clicking. Um, so I've made the walls in this area, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to change color to yellow, and I'm going to make the doors. And the reason I do that is the doors I want to be able to move if they open it or delete if they kick them, if they crush them or burn them or something. And I'm a who little more that? careful. Oh my God. Who would do that? What? Kind of who, would, who would do that? <laughs> um, for the normal doors, I don't worry about really where the line falls. For the secret doors, I try to be a little bit careful. Sometimes I'll even zoom in a little more um, just so that there's not a break in the line. So I think I've got everything here. I don't know. But what I'm going to do is go back to objects. I'm going to run over to where I left our party, which was the uh, fountain of health and beauty, and I am going to grab, grab awesome. the best, dude. I'm going to grab awesome, I'm going to grab all of them, um, so I'm just going to copy those losers, <laughs> <laughs> coming back here, and I click where I want to paste them, notice that it lit them up, and then normally what I do is I select one person, and I use the control L or Apple L, command L so that I can look for leaks. So I look for light leaks. And each of these rooms looks pretty well sealed. Uh, you can see when I get out beyond the work I've done, um, it, it exposes everything. But in here, it is all individual rooms. And I wanted to show you one other thing. I'm going to take Awesomer, and I am actually going to Kill him. Uh, temporarily make him a token, which is me. So uh, I now own Awesomer, Nanner -nan -nan, and I'm going to go to my tools and rejoin as player. And that's going to log me back in so I can really get an idea of what this looks like as a player. Oops, I screwed up because the players are looking at a different screen. So I'll come back in here. I say put the players onto this untitled layer, and while we're at it, let's title it level one C uh, mouth of doom. And now the players should be there. Rejoin as player. And hopefully. There we go. So now, this is what I would see as a player. I see Death Tribble's little bit of token, but notice what I don't see is the secret door. And I don't even see any indication of the secret door. I don't see the room number. I don't see any of that stuff. All I see is a room, and Awesomer comes over here and kicks in the door, because that's what Awesomer does. Because all that's on the GM layer when you export in the PNG, correct? Uh, because all that's on the GM layer, exactly, yes. And then, so as he opens the door, I am simply going to go back to my dynamic lighting layer. I'm going to grab that yellow one, and I'm opening the door. You can see the light, and he's going to see it on his screen, too. Bloop. 
And then when I go back to objects and tokens, I can move him through and he can see in this hallway. But he won't see that secret door. He'll never find it because he's, he's not that awesome. He's it's just true. awesomer it's, than the rest of them. It's true. And you know what? Being awesome than the rest of them is not very hard. <laughs> I don't have to get up that early in the morning. <laughs> That's right. That's true, too. Um, and I think the only other thing that is important to do is to be able to uh, say that was really fun. Nice that you tried to uh, escape like that, but look who's right behind you. Somehow teleporting in here is it's, a dude. It's, it's Skeeter Green. No. It's Skeeter Green with 158 hit points, and maybe he's only a large creature. And uh, I think that's everything. Uh, monsters, names, yep. Uh, I could throw in some tables and chairs and stuff just as quickly as I threw in the demon. Um, so if I wanted a bookcase, for example, uh, if I wanted to really make the players feel feel good, I could throw in a bookshelf um, and other things like that. And one thing to add, but add is some of our map layers do have some of these things on them. Like um, I know the cloister area has like certain like foliage and things that yep. um, that will be... Although on its own layer, like combined under one, you'll be able to use Photoshop or the GIMP to cut those pieces out and reuse them in your maps here. Um, I have to, I have to say, just because Matt Finch will get angry because as an attorney, you can't use them commercially, you can't redistribute them or anything. But for all your games you use with these maps, all that stuff is going to be available to you to manipulate for yourself. And by us providing you with the same tools that we have from our cartographer to get these made up, um, and it's the same tools we're providing to Fantasy Grounds because they're doing an internal conversion um, with to a module with the Rapid Ethic and the Tome of Horrors. You'll have the same. Um, you'll be able to do these for Roll20, you'll be able to do them for D20 Pro projectors. Um, we're trying to give the most value to buying these maps, and there are over a hundred of them. And um, <laughs> you don't have to use our numbers or our Rapid Ethic by any stretch. These are useful for anything, and I mean, everyone's seen them all. What do you think, Edwin? How many of these would you find useful in regular games? Um, a lot of them. More, more more, than I have time to ever run. Yeah, and that's kind of the, the, what's, that's what makes this special. I think as a Kickstarter for the maps coming up, if you never, if you think that Bill Webb's the worst guy you ever met, and you think Matt Finch is a no good nobody, um, and Frog God Games, as far as they're concerned, they can go to hell, you still might want these. <laughs> because... Uh, you will be able to run your own campaigns and your own games in ways that are amazing. I know Skeeter Green, who's working on the project manager on Rapid Ethic, um, he he doesn't even play through the whole thing. He will grab levels when he's going to run a game. He'll grab one level map and maybe some of the ideas and maybe not. Um, and it makes a great tool. And these aren't going to be expensive. The final amount is not decided, but it isn't anywhere near what you think. It's going to be under $50 uh, for... Um, for the maps as layers, I believe that's what it is. I think it's all into one packet or maybe split into two, but it's cheap. I mean, considering how much the maps cost us to make, which is a lot, <laughs> you, um, the actual cartography, I'm not going to lie, is extremely expensive to get these made this far because the talent that Robert put into these is uh, extreme. The time it took to actually draw the drafts and everything else, there's a lot of effort and work in here, but we want you to be able to use them the best way you can, so that's why we're showing this. And, um, Ed, was there anything to add about Roll20? Um, boy, I don't think so. Um, then I think, actually, uh, we're pretty Yeah, I think we're good. Um, I may uh, put up later today or tomorrow a second video. I'll just gonna go through the layers with me doing a narration. Um, I may have Edwin on there. I may not. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank everybody for watching this, and I want to uh, encourage you that uh, the Kickstarter should launch around October the 5th and I um, encourage you to go ahead and pledge for it. And if you like maps at all, for any reason, we have physical maps too. We have a PDF, uh, simple maps. We have, you name it, we got maps for you. So hope you guys will check it out. And uh, thanks a lot for your time, Edwin. We really appreciate it. Um, sure thing. It's fun. You can, you can see Edwin GM this very map here coming up uh, a week from Thursday on Twitch TV. We're yep. running a live game. And I also wanted to say that uh, Matt Finch is start thinking about starting to run a game. And so if... OSR type Swords of Wizardry games are your thing. Uh, you should be able to check out Matt's channel at Uncle Matt's D and D Studio channel um, and see what's up with that. All right, thank you, everybody. Cheers.